Another useful function of tint swatches is the ease with which they can be replaced and recolored. Here we've got my one ink newsletter using black and tints of black to colorize it. As I said earlier, I did not use the black swatch on the swatches panel. Instead, I created a new swatch that is the same. It's just black. But I did that because I can't delete or really modify this particular swatch. This is a default swatch of InDesign. It can't be modified. But my key color one can. So if I double click on that, I'll move this out of the way just a bit. We'll turn on preview. Here I've got my CMYK sliders. Let's say I want to make the entire publication printed in just cyan. I change that and you can see that all of my tints over on the swatches panel also change except for at the top of the TOC column where it says volume eight, issue one, spring 2016. You can see that I accidentally set that as black as well as the page number. So those are things I need to fix. And this is a good way of making sure I'm not using that black swatch, but I can use this as a spot color as well. So let's say we want Pantone solid coated and maybe we'll make this a purple. Ha, huh, not too bad. Notice on the swatches panel, my key color swatch renamed as did all of its tint swatches. And you can see that the icons changed to become spot color and lab instead of CMYK. So by making my new key color, I can modify that. And then by building tint swatches from that key color, I can quickly recolor the entire publication just by editing the one key color. And that gives me a lot of creative freedom.